Hello everyone, I want to show you a really good transmitter made by a Flose. Well, at least the basic circuit has been made by a Flose. So, what is this transmitter about? It's a shortwave transmitter with a variable power from 1 up to 10 watts. So you can use any power in that range and 1 watt will give you a neat range for a small village and 10 watts will be strong enough that you get uh, ionic reflection on the atmosphere and then you can broadcast a few hundred miles. Of course, not with the best quality, but in theory it's possible. The transmitter has been a little bit modified by me, as you will see in the following videos and clips and pictures, and then you get a working AM transmitter, but the basic circuit has been designed by Eflose. Before I show you how to build this transmitter, or before I show you the building steps that I made, let's talk about transmitters in general. Well, I've already built a transmitter by myself, but Eflose has also made a transmitter, and this is the one that you see in this video. Uh, AM transmitter, of course, does not sound as well as FM transmitter, that's due to technical effects, but hey, it's a neat circuit and you can play around with it if you want. Okay, have fun and play with the circuit if you want. In the next step, or in the next part of this video, you're going to have a listen how this transmitter sounds on the air, and then we jump over to the circuit diagrams and building transmitter pictures. So this is a live recording from the Eflose shortwave transmitter over the air. As you can see in the picture, there is a radio, and this is the radio that is picking up the signal, and the, out the output from the radio, the headphone jack, is connected to my MP3 player, which is recording this, yeah, this voice from me. I'm using a one buck or so microphone, a cheap DIY microphone amp, and as you can hear, it already sounds quite viable. Imagine how good this transmitter would sound with some professional audio equipment before it. Could be physical audio equipment, or could be a program on your computer. It has a compressor and limiter function. Whatever. So as you can hear, for an AM transmitter, the Eflose transmitter just sounds great. Now let's start with the explanation how the Eflose transmitter works. The schematic that you see is the original schematic from the Eflose uh, shortwave transmitter. It contains of an oscillator, which is T1, a square wave generator and buffer, which is T2, a driver, which is T3 and T4, and, of course, the final amp, which is T5. The transmitter does work quite well, but now let's get back to the component level. The oscillator contains of R1, R2, C1, XTAL and C2, and C3. R1 and R2 define the working point of the class A amplifier. The crystal defines the frequency on which the oscillator is working, since it feeds back the output signal to the input from the amplifier with a phase shift of 180 degrees. C2, the 100 picofarads, helps the oscillator to generate a stabilized uh, oscillation. C3 decouples the RF signal from the DC level and fets it to T2. Transistor T2 generates a square wave signal and buffers the signal from the oscillator. The buffer contains of R3, R4, C4, R5 and of course T2. As I said before, it generates a square wave signal a square wave signal and also it buffers the signal from the oscillator. Now we have a square wave signal, but it could be improved a little bit, and that is what T3 and T4, the LED and the 10 nanofarad capacitor and the 470 nanofarads capacitor do. They buffer the signal again and amplify it so it can drive the RF510 MOSFET final amp. R6 helps discharging the gate a little bit and also it helps the transistors to get a bigger signal. The final amp contains of T5, L1 and C7. L1 is a high impedance for RF frequency, meanwhile it's a low impedance for DC voltage. That means that the final amp transistor RF510, which is a MOSFET transistor, can generate lots of RF energy because it gets lots of DC power, but for the RF energy L1 has a high resistance. The output from this thing the output from the final amp goes via C8 to a PI filter, consisting of C9, L2 and VC1. The PI filter matches the impedance from the antenna to the transmitter. Now let's talk about the modulator. To make this continuous wave transmitter into an AM transmitter, you need to modulate the final amp. Therefore I'm using a BD242 PNP transistor, which varies the current that flows into the final amp, which causes amplitude modulation to be generated. How does the circuit work? Well, there are, I mean, there are a few resistors and capacitors in here. Let's start with R1, R2 and R3. 
The resistor R1 charges the capacitor C1, so there is not much current flowing between uh, the audio input and the audio source. If you connect it, because otherwise, if this resistor wouldn't be there, eventually the current could flow into the audio source and could damage it. Resistor R3 has the following job. If you turn the potentiometer all the way down to zero volts, there would all current flow through the base connection from this transistor. R3 protects the transistor from too much current. R2 just is like, uh, let's say, a sound improving resistor, because with this RC network with R2 and C1, I got the best sound results. Okay, C2, the 220 nanofarads capacitor, has the job that if there is any RF left from the final amp, uh, it, it stops it from flowing back into the PMP transistor. L1 has the job to keep the RF away from the meter, which is connected to the VSWR connection where you can measure how well the antenna is aligned. Okay, and of course with the potentiometer VR1 you can align the current that flows into base from the transistor, which reduces or increases the output power from your transmitter. Now let's talk about the 7812 voltage regulator. The modulator makes the transmitter require 24 volts, so that the modulator can deliver 12 to 14 volts on the drain of the MOSFET, which, is, which, will, which causes some high RF power. But the circuits itself does work quite well with 12 volts, so I'm using a 12 volt voltage regulator. The circuit is quite straightforward. C1 and C2 on the circuit help that the voltage regulator does not oscillate. Also C3 stabilizes the voltage a little bit better. The diode above the voltage regulator, the 1 and 401 diode, has the job that if on the output side from the voltage regulator for some reason will be more voltage than on the input side, it will lead the voltage from the output side to the input side and the voltage regulator is protected and won't get destroyed. The voltage regulator requires a heatsink because it gets quite warm, but in case of emergency you could work it without heatsink, but I don't recommend it. Anyway, um, that's about the voltage regulator. So now let's talk about the input filter. The transmitter does obviously produce RF power or RF energy. Well, what happens is, or what could happen is, that the RF energy flows back into the power supply. And we don't want it, because the power supply then could malfunction. Therefore, I have the following components. The L1 and L2 coil and some capacitors from C1 to C4. Both coils act like a high resistance resistor for the RF frequency that is being generated. In my case, it's in the 49 meter band. Capacitors C2 and C3 supply the coils with their job. Capacitors C1 and C4 are just there for buffering out any, let's say, audio signals that could go back to the power supply, because the power supply doesn't want audio signals. There is a fast blow fuse with 3.15 amps. If something on the transmitter goes wrong, the fuse blows and all components will be destroyed. So now let's talk about the audio amplifier using the LM386. The modulator does require quite some current on its base because it also has to, has to switch like a few hundred milliamps or even one amp, depending on how much power you are going to use, on the vinyl amps transistor. And so it requires quite some current on the base. The audio output from a headphone jack is too low to modulate this transistor quite good, and so I'm using an LM386 standard audio amplifier circuit. With the 10K RV1 potentiometer you can vary the volume. The capacitor C5 decouples any leftover DC from the audio source, the 100 microhandy coil, L1 and L2 both coils, filter out some RF or leftover RF from the audio source. R1 and R2 lay together a stereo signal so you get a mono signal from a stereo source and you can connect R2 via a jumper. If you don't connect R2 you can use a mono signal. The capacitor C3 and C6 and C1 have the uh, the capacitors C1, C3, C6, C4 help the, uh, help the LM386 not to oscillate. C2 decouples the output voltage from pin 5 from the LM386 so that there is only AC left and not any voltage from the chip left. The chip puts out like a half watt or so, which is enough to modulate the final amp modulator transistor. R4 charges the capacitor C2 to half supply voltage at the beginning of the connection from this transmitter. Okay, that's pretty much how this circuit works. It's a very straightforward, very simple audio amplifier 
with lots of ceramic capacitors to stop it from oscillation or picking up the signal from the transmitter, since 10 watts on an antenna can easily interfere with an audio amplifier. Hello everyone, I want to show you the transmitter right now. Here you can see the voltmeter which is connected to the test point. Here you can see the audio amplifier board and the RF filter board for the DC input. And I've connected a 43 feet long wire antenna on the tuning capacitor which matches the PI filter. On the input of the transmitter I'm using my MP3 player since due to the audio amplifier you can use line or headphone level input on this transmitter. Here is my test receiver demonstrating you how good this transmitter sounds. I connect the power supply and you will notice that the audio won't start as soon as I connect it, due to the delay circuit. The shortwave transmitter. Test transmission, EFLOSE shortwave transmitter. Hallo, das ist eine Testsendung des EFLOSE Kurzwellensenders. Dies ist eine Testsendung des EFLOSE Kurzwellensenders. So now I want to show you how to match the antenna. Here you can see the volts, which is a little bit low. If it was 10 volts, this is like the third take of this video. So it's better now. So the antenna is not tuned. And you can tune it by aligning the tuning capacitor. If the voltage is at the lowest level, it's tuned best. So I'm tuning the capacitor. Oh, there we go. Now the antenna is, on, is in resonance. And you have the best transmission power. Hello now let's take the energy saver bulb and hold it to the antenna. It should light up, but it doesn't, since we are just on like 2 or 3 watts low power. Now I crank up the power to 10 watts on this potentiometer here, which is like 13 or 14 volts. The radio gets silent, that has two reasons. First, I would have to increase the volume from the MP3 player. I would have to increase the volume from the MP3 player to get more driver power for this final amp. I mean this modulator transistor. And also due to the high field strength, the radio is absolutely overloading and therefore you can't hear the modulation very well. Now let's hook up the, ant uh, the bulb to this antenna. There we go, it works quite well. And as you can see, this transmitter is putting out quite some watts. Now let's turn back the power again and the modulation comes back. As I said, if you increase the power of this transmitter, you also will have to increase the volume. You can either do that by increasing the volume on your audio source or increasing the volume on the volume potentiometer. But as you could hear, the transmitter is working excellent. With my 40 feet to 5 long wire antenna, I can get ranges of a few hundred miles. After this clip, you will hear a recording this, receive, uh, this transmitter has been recorded on a receiver that is more than 300 miles away from my location and it has been recorded via sporadic over the atmosphere.